Hello writers, Mrs. Damazi here with another top-notch teaching lesson. I'm really excited to get into our drafting stage of our persuasive speech. But before we get started, remember that if you like these videos to subscribe and hit the thumbs up so you know every time I upload a new video. Yesterday we worked on organizing so that we could begin drafting. And today you're gonna use what you organized to begin drafting, which is super exciting. This is my favorite part of the writing process because you get to write all of your ideas, everything you're thinking, and you just write and write and write and write and write until you can't write anymore. Let me share my screen so we can remember where we are in the writing process. We've done lots of brainstorming. Yesterday you worked on organizing your brainstorming so you could begin drafting, and today you are actually gonna begin drafting and writing fast and furiously. So yesterday you organized your ideas and you thought about your audience. Remember that first part that I talked to you about where you wanna paint a picture of what's happening and then write your big bold statement? That's what you're gonna to do today. But before you do that, you need to think about your audience. So my audience, I am writing to everybody at my school. That's so important. The reason why that's really important for me to know is that they're gonna have a lot of questions. We have pre-K friends, all the way to 12th grade friends at my school. We have faculty members, we have staff members, we have police guards, we have parents, we have all kinds of people at my school, and some people may not even know that we have a school custodian. How sad is that? I have to paint a picture of what a school custodian basically does and why they're important. But I also have to remember that some of these people are gonna have lots of questions. And if I don't address those questions and address those wondering ideas that they might have, then they may not even be listening to my speech. For instance, if I were to say, friends, you're not going to have time to eat lunch today. Today, you're just gonna work and work and work and work and work. Well, you're not gonna to listen to anything that I have to say after that. If I have five things that I need you to do, you're not gonna be thinking about those five things. You're gonna be thinking, I have to work so much today. How am I going to eat? I'm going to be starving. How am I going to work if I'm starving? So you have to address those questions. So instead of me saying, you're going to work and work and work all day, you're not going to have time for lunch. Here are the five things you need to do. I might say something like this. Friends, today you're going to work and work and work all day, but don't worry. I know you might think, how am I going to have time to do anything? But I have planned some time for you to do some other things. You're not gonna have time for lunch, but I know you might be thinking, how am I going to eat? You are going to be able to eat. You're just gonna to have to eat while you're working. Do you see how I addressed all of those questions that you have? Then you're going to listen to my five reasons and things of what you need to do today. That's why it's really important you think about your audience and you think about things that they might ask or wonder and you add that into your speech. I'm gonna share my screen again so you can see how I did that in my introduction today. Have you ever wondered what it might be like to be in charge of a school building? When you think about all the parts of making sure a school building is safe and running correctly, you might begin to feel overwhelmed. You might be wondering why I asked you to think about that and I have a great reason. Everyone should appreciate Mr. Harrell, our school custodian. Notice how I painted a picture, but I also invited my listener into my speech by saying, I want you to wonder this and I want you to think about this and I want you to be actively thinking and participating in what it is that I'm gonna say. Now I think they're really excited to know all the things that are important when you are a school custodian and taking really good care of the school building. I know that you might be thinking, well, I don't know how to address my audience. So I've come up with some ways that you can begin your sentences to help your audience feel like they are being an active participant of your speech. So first you can name the questions or concerns that anybody might have. So I know you might be thinking, I know you might be worrying. If you are asking, let me explain. You might wonder, or you could also ask questions the reader might have too. So have you ever, do you wonder why? What about? These are great ways to begin your sentences to really engage your audience and make them actively participating in your speech. 
Your to-do list today is that you're going to remember that great persuasive writers know that as they draft, they think about their audience and what questions their audience may ask. So write your introduction while thinking about your audience. Remember your introduction starts with you painting a picture of what it is you're talking about. Remember to ask questions to your audience and then you end with a big bold statement. All you need today is your writer's notebook. Have fun painting a picture of your introduction for your audience. Think about questions they might ask and things they might wonder so you can add that in and weave that into your writing. Have fun writing fast and furiously and I will see you next time. Bye.